It's Saturday morning in Largs and dozens of athletes are gearing up for an intense day of competition. But this isn't your average sporting event. Every one of the competitors has Parkinson's. I've never been to one of these tournaments, but I was quite taken aback last night when I seen how many people and it's just it's great crack, you know, it's good great fun here, you know. Uh, and everybody's in the same same boat, obviously different levels of Parkinson's, so See, we'll, we, shall, we shall see how that's going to work out for me. Okay, have a good day. Good luck. Stephen Somerville was diagnosed with Parkinson's in October. Before that, he spent four decades driving HGVs across Europe. I was slowing down. I could feel myself, you know, my body slowing down. And two or three, my handwriting, my speech, a wee bit slurred sometimes, and a little kind of leg tremor. And I thought, there's something not right, you know. So I went to the doctors and then the doctors put me up to the hospital then with a couple of head scans and a consultation with the, the woman and she said Parkinson's. So I wouldn't say it was a shock, I knew it was something, you know, eh, and that's what, that's what everyone was pointing to. Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurological condition. It happens when the brain cells which produce dopamine stop working properly. It mostly affects a person's movements and can cause tremors and stiffness. There is no cure, but medications and surgical procedures can help. And we are here today because exercise has also been shown to improve some of those physical symptoms. When I was diagnosed, they gave me all the pamphlets and all the stuff with it, you know, parts of Scotland, and it's pushing, you know, physical activity. Well, I used to run when I was small. I played rugby, played golf. Uh, so I played a little bit of table tennis, 10, 11 years old. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. So I thought, so it's, it's been good for me. Morag's been living with the condition since 2012, but only found table tennis three years ago. Someone from the local club that messaged me and said, do you know that if you play table tennis, it's good for people with Parkinson's? And uh, I'd finished work by that time, so I just said to one of my friends, what do you do on a Wednesday? And she didn't do anything, so we went along to this, uh, so it's more like a social club, um, table tennis, it's not serious, it's a for over 50s. And so we went down to Wednesday morning and started playing and really enjoyed it. I've been playing here in the past three years, but my game's not, it's, it's not advanced any. Anyway. <laughs> uh, there's a, other people who are good players, but uh, I've got, I've got, I've got, I don't think I'll be in the World Championship so anytime, anytime soon. Amanda Mackay is the Physical Activity Coordinator for Parkinson's UK, which has helped to organise the Scottish Open. I was really surprised when I came in here today and saw how big and how busy the event was. How popular is table tennis within the Parkinson's community? So people are, are looking for activities now, so finding the right thing for them is really important. So, you know, we've, we're working with Table Tennis Scotland now to develop um, more opportunities for people with Parkinson's to play um, table tennis. So, yeah, we've got, you know, 10, 14 groups that are just specifically for people with Parkinson's, but other groups are, are also open. So, you know, it doesn't need to be just about Parkinson's and table tennis, but yeah, we're finding every year more and more people are, are coming, new groups are sprouting up all the time. So, yeah, it's really lovely to see. Competitors have travelled from the likes of Spain, Malta and Sweden. I'm from Germany, from Bavaria. I never had a sport or, 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 or tried such competition. So that was absolutely new for me. And in, in the first time, I was very nervous. That it's getting better now. But it, it's also, we, we fight very hard in the matches. For Andrea, being among people who understand her condition is comforting. So we, we have just uh, weird movements. And here is everybody moves like this. Nobody stares at you or something like this, and that's also a good feeling. Amanda says physical activity can help people feel more in control of their symptoms. It's very passive, taking medication. I think what physical activity does is it gives people that power to, to manage the condition themselves. It gives them, allows them to, to give something, you know, feel like they're fighting it, I guess. That, that's probably quite key for people to, to have that kind of ownership over their condition. I've got that competitive, but just after a game there, I, I, I played very well. I, I managed to win, but uh, I just want to get better. I, I, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm in it for the social side. We've got a great club there and great meeting, meeting the people, great coaches and everything. But you want to get better, you know. That's just a competitive bit. 
We've heard you're one to watch. Can we expect big things from you today? Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put your money on me. While Stevie, Morag and Andrea continue to adapt to life with Parkinson's, major progress is being made in labs across Scotland. Dr Tilo Kunad, who's based at Edinburgh University, is one of the world's leading stem cell researchers. Parkinson's has a pathology called the Lewy body, and it's full of this protein called alpha-synuclein. So normally it's very difficult to access and difficult to see because it's inside, deep inside the brain. But because we can make stem cells from these people, turn them into neurons, we can look at this Parkinson's pathology or Parkinson's problems in the dish in the lab. When you say Lewy body, what comes to mind for me is dementia. So how closely linked are Parkinson's and dementia? Yeah, they are actually on the same spectrum. So the same type of pathology with this alpha-synuclein is found in Parkinson's and in Lewy body dementia. And in some cases, Parkinson's can progress to a dementia-like state, and this is when the Lewy bodies also move into the part of the brain that's important for thinking. So it is part of a, a bigger spectrum. How much can you understand about Parkinson's by looking at other neurodegenerative diseases? I think a lot can be learned from looking at other conditions including um, motor neuron disease, um, Alzheimer's, Lewy body dementia. So a lot of these conditions have problems with protein aggregation. And the identity of the protein can be different in different conditions, but the problem, the, the issue of getting rid of these aggregates are common amongst a lot of uh, neuro neurodegenerative conditions. Because of those similarities, Parkinson's UK has now joined forces with the UK Dementia Research Institute to set up a new research centre. It's being led by Dr Muratil Mukit at the University of Dundee. How significant is this new research centre going to be for Scotland? I think it's a really important milestone for Parkinson's research in the whole of the United Kingdom and it's great that it's, it's going to be based in Scotland uh, and it's going to involve researchers in Scotland as well as colleagues in other centres around the UK. £10 million will go towards finding new methods of Parkinson's prediction and prevention as well as treatments to slow and even reverse its progression. I think that what's exciting for me is I think we will make, I think we're right at this sort of a really uh, sort of critical point of the research. We, we have lots of clues about what might be going wrong in brain cells and what we, we have a chance now to do is really take that research and form partnerships with stakeholders that can really help maximise the impact. So what I mean by that, for example, are charities to bring patients to be involved in the research, companies that can help with using that research for better diagnostics, companies to help uh, you know, develop drugs, clinicians to do clinical trials. We want to really be the engine. I think the centre wants to be the engine of taking discoveries and then working with all these different uh, stakeholders to ultimately find new treatments, to find new diagnostics. Yeah, so we use this antimicrobial. Okay. That's working brilliantly, by the way. Okay, Miratul and Tilo both believe this new centre could play a major role in turning their decades of work into real change for the growing number of people living with Parkinson's. I think the really long-term hope is to slow progression with something like uh, oral drugs. So oral drugs, something not very expensive, and especially if we can detect Parkinson's early, especially with all the genetic testing that can be done, and also you can now find people with Parkinson's much earlier, and if you can intervene with uh, a pill to prevent the progression to motor symptoms, prevent dementia, that's just going to be the game changer. Certainly, uh, from, from my perspective, Scotland's been punching really well above its weight, and I think that's been really important for patients because I think it's a really hard, complex disease to live with, but I think just for them to understand that people are working really hard on their behalf to really understand what's wrong, to find new treatments for them, that I think gives them hope. <laughs>